what has this experience been like? Because you hope that the movie is going to be well received. Yeah, I'm like, hello. <laughs> you hope the movie is going to be well received. You never know, but you know, everyone, everyone seems to really love the movie. What, what has this experience been like for the three of you? Well, it's really gratifying because we, we had a daunting task ahead of us with a sequel. It's a, kind of a curse that sits on sequels, and most people anticipate that it's going to be a, kind of a recycling of old material or something that makes it feel unimportant and a cash grab. So we, we, from the very start, were challenging ourselves to come up with something that felt organic, like a middle act of a trilogy that, that earned its place, and just carrying that forward, just keeping each other honest. Um, kind of paid off because uh, I think we were our toughest critics and when it got out there uh, the, the, the daring aspects of it and the emotionally resonant side of it, it, it all seemed to really hit the audience in a, in, in a way that was pretty validating. You know, you, you really, well, we really didn't want to di disappoint ourselves because we all had worked on the first film and we knew that it, it resonated with an audience so when we started working on it we, we, we felt the same way about that first film and, and so we wanted to make sure we, we stay true to that idea and yet bring something completely new and different. And when it, the movie came out, we felt like, you know, it, that started to resonate with people and, and that people were surprised by where this movie takes the audience. And, and I think we're really proud of that. And hearing that resonate back is, is really rewarding. My voice. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't want to talk to me, and that's okay. I accept that. You've seen me before. Um, I'm very proud of you. Very, very proud of you. For, for you guys, uh, obviously every movie goes through a lot of incarnations, through storyboards. You rework it, you rework it. Was there a radically different version of this movie that almost got made? Did it come close, or was this the version that you'd been basically tweaking with the whole time, if you know what I mean? Well, there was one, there was one significant change. Uh, Drago Bloodvis was never meant to be introduced in this film. He was uh, an encroaching force that was being saved for the third part of the trilogy. And the sympathetic villain of this story was actually Hiccup's mother, Valka. That she had, she, she was so strongly on the side of dragons that she didn't believe in coexistence. That ultimately the humans would sell out the dragons and therefore the only, the only real means forward was to, to go to Burke and extract those dragons and get them to safety before the dragon army, before the uh, the forces of Drago came crashing onto their shores, and it, it actually just created uh, kind of a it had this neat Shakespearean quality to it, where Hiccup had to fight his mother to pro to protect the dragons, but at the same time, um, it was because she is a mother. We we started getting immediate feedback from mothers out there that that's just an irredeemable character, and we realized we had to arc her a little bit sooner. And, come to see Hiccup's way uh, by the end of the by the end of the second act so that she could support him going forward. And it meant pulling pulling the villain in a little earlier than we anticipated. And you have to wait until the third film to actually see where Drago's character goes. Because he's a, a lot more complex than he's presented in this second installment. By the way, this leads me to my next question, which I was going to ask anyway. How far along are you in the script? Where, where are you? Because there's a lot of people that are very invested in this trilogy, and everyone knows it is a trilogy. So what can you tease where the script is? Yes, Dean, where are we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were a few months of pitching outlines and making sure that everybody was content with where it was headed, and now I'm, I'm deep into the script. I'm about halfway through. So I was literally working on it this afternoon before coming here. I have to hand it off pretty soon. Uh, how many pages have you written? I am um, like page 60 right now, somewhere thereabouts. So that's not bad. And when you're writing something like this, do you have the entire outline pretty much mapped out? Or how much are you figuring out as you're adding words and dialogue? Well, I, I, I believe in the outline. And so I spend a lot of time structurally beating it up. And by the time I'm ready to write dialogue and flesh out a scene, that that scene has its place already pretty cemented in the story. So it's, uh, it's for me, a lot of the a lot of the planning and a lot of the sort of head scratching goes on up front and by the time I'm fleshing out a scene I, I have a pretty clear idea of what it is so that that part tends to go relatively faster so uh, my last thing for you and I promise I'll leave you alone but uh, what can you tease people about like a log line or anything about the third movie in terms of story and that what you've sort of teased at at the end of the second film well it's the culmination of hiccups coming of age and so both he and toothless are now chiefs of their respective tribes and it's a dueling story where you have uh, both characters trying to do what's right for their kind um, 
and a, a, a you know a, an eventual outcome where Hiccup's able to kind of stand on his own and like we're going to take the story to where the books begin which is Hiccup as a uh, as an adult reflecting back at a time when there were dragons suggesting that the dragons will in some way go away and why and could they come back and what the mystery of all that is will will be saved for the actual story i will say uh, i speak for all fandom and say that sounds cool all of you congratulations on how to train a dragon 2 fantastic work thank you for your time thanks, thanks so, so much, much. Thanks.